Elon Musk is testing a $1 a year subscription model in New Zealand and the Philippines that he says could reduce bot usage on X. That's the platform, of course, formerly known as Twitter. Users will have to pay that annual fee to post content or like, share and reply to post. Those who opt out will only be able to read posts. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Great news, everybody. Have you ever said to yourself, you know, I really enjoy this free app, but now I want to pay money to use it. I know there are apps out there that earn revenue uh, through adding expanded features and selling them. This isn't a new business model. But what has made Twitter great for so long is that there's very little barrier to entry and therefore, you know, when algorithmically not interfered with, it's a level playing field. Sadly, we know that basically since day one, Twitter has been compromised. And even to this day, it is shadow banning, um, permanently suspending, you know, deplatforming people every day. Every day. The, the free speech haven that we were promised is far from it. I've never liked when companies say, or even Rumble, for example. I mean, I've always said Rumble shouldn't call itself a free speech platform. We should call it freer speech or equal application of the rules. Because when everybody controls everything in between your platform and the end user, you have to live by their rules too. Twitter, since Elon Musk has purchased it, has now rebranded. You know, it's it's it promised to be a free speech platform, but ultimately. It still has to live by the rules of the Google Play Store and the Apple iTunes Store, which have hate speech rules and all sorts of their own, you know, um, you know, there's all sorts of uh, rules that you have to apply. Where Twitter is, you know, it might be quote unquote free, but, you know, as Asmongold correctly points out, there is never a free app. You are the product. And that's what it is, right? They sell data. They sell ad space. Well, now uh, Twitter is running out a test, which of course will roll out, of charging to use Twitter, charging everybody. Now, it's just a test right now, but have you ever seen a big, huge mega corporation test an increase in fees and then have it go away? Of course not. Just in the same way that... no. <laughs> No tax is ever temporary. I mean, if you live in Wisconsin, you know that there's still a stadium tax that was you know, long after the stadium's been paid for. Once you give the government your money, they don't give it back. Now, X will be testing a $1 a year, $1 a year to access key features, including the ability to tweet and retweet. So we've gone from not for, you know we've gone from pay eight dollars so that you won't get shadow banned which is bs um pay eight dollars so you can upload longer videos that's true pay eight dollars so you can um get a revenue share that's true um you know my earnings on twitter are irrelevant they're they pay for the eight dollars um but it's not like it's ever going to replace youtube or rumble for for revenue for me I just can't uh, steal enough videos for that. I'll leave that to people like Ian Miles Chong. But, you know, this is weird. I think that this is fundamentally flawed. And, you know, and I'll tell you why I think that. So I don't understand this. First of all, as a user, okay, look, like I said, to be, you know, full disclosure, I pay for Twitter Blue and I earn enough from Twitter ad revenue share that I don't, that it's free, you know? Um, but I don't get this. The, the claim is that they want to do this to get rid of bots, okay? But how does this get rid of bots? First of all, why do I have to subsidize the cost of your bot problem that you should be fixing? You know? The, this is weird. And then first of all, or second of all, you know, the $1 thing isn't going to really stop these crypto bots 
and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to, because if they're making money, for, to me, it's not just quote unquote bots that are annoy, annoying. It's like the manual bots. You know what I mean? Like there's bots, right? But then there's like bots, people that are in your replies. Like the new one is, oh, I, I, I made all this money talking to, and they tag a different, like, uh, they tag like a different um, Twitter user or X user. Uh, you know, it's so great. I'm so happy. I earned so much money talking to so-and-so because there's money made that these, these bots, you know, these bots, uh, they're, they're, they're worth a dollar. So then he'll argue what, oh, we have to, well, then they have to go through all these credit cards and after we ban them, it makes us, it makes it get a little easier or makes it a little difficult, more difficult, uh, you know, for them to come back, maybe, but not impossible, right? Users who are unable or unwilling to pay the annual fee will only be able to view posts and follow accounts, the company said. Excess bot activity has been a consistent rallying cry for Musk since before he acquired the company. He first claimed that Twitter as a platform was previously known uh, under reporting the number of bots on the, pla uh, on the platform as part of its efforts to back out of the binding $44 billion acquisition deal. It was a claim based on the analysis that was disputed by numerous experts. Bot activity has reportedly worsened under Musk's ownership. Many decisions ordered by Musk have dramatically changed the social media platform, which is widely considered to be a part of the disaster response infrastructure and an important tool for news gathering. You know, early in his ownership, Musk ordered changes to the way that users are verified, phasing out the notability requirements in favor for a paid model, and made cuts to trust and safety teams as part of a broader cost-cutting initiative. Well, trust and safety teams weren't really helping any bots. You know, they weren't helping get rid of bots. I know, I mean, we know this, right? Trust and safety was not um, getting rid of bots. They were worried about people who like Trump. Independent researchers have previously identified a significant number of bot accounts that tout crypto tokens, driving up their prices. Many users have complained about the platform's degradation, and yet competitors like Blue Sky, Meta's Threads, and Mastodon have yet to mature into any meaningful type of competition. It's unclear when the paid subscription will roll out worldwide, but I assure you, by the way, it will. I assure you that it will. And, you know, it's all, for me... I, I don't know, you know, um, I, I don't think that this is the actual fix to the bot problem at all. You know, th that's just not true. Um, you know, I think it might make it a little harder, but the most annoying ones like crypto bots, when there's money involved, they'll be able to get, they'll be able to justify the cost. You know, and this too, like uh, a recent report now contradicts claims by Elon Musk and Twitter CEO Linda Yaccarino that people are returning to the social media platform. According to market intelligence firm SimilarWeb, Twitter's global website traffic was down 14% year over year in September, with Android usage also down 14.8%. However, traffic to Elon Musk's profile and posts increased by 96% year over year. Well, you know, you know that Elon is, has like some Elon button that he, his posts get forced on everybody. Like he, Elon ex experienced what it's like to be shadow banned like the rest of us. And then he just told some engineer like, hey, fix that. I can't go like two minutes without seeing an Elon Musk tw post on Twitter. Not only Twitter, but Facebook was also hit by the decrease in usage on the web. Although some of the other leading social networks also appear to be losing traffic, Twitter's performance has been worse in recent months. As it was in September, it was down 14%, although Facebook was not that far behind with being down 10.4%. Despite the decline in usage, X remains one of the largest social networks, even though the Twitter.com trails Facebook.com. It remains one of the most traffic social media websites. The, the idea that they're going to roll out this fee... I just, I don't buy it. Uh, I don't, I don't think that to me, it's a, it's an end around. 
they get your credit card. Once they get you to put your credit card in or your bank account or whatever, it becomes a lot easier to make it go from $1 a year to $5 a year, from $5 a year to $20 a year. Once they already have your card, it's just like cable companies, right? Oh, our bundle, <laughs> you know, I, there's probably not a person out there unless you're, you know, under 20 years old that doesn't remember what it was like, uh, you know, paying for cable and it's starting at, you know, $49.99. And then after two years, you're paying $179 a month and you just don't even notice it. You don't even notice it. It goes up five bucks here, seven bucks there, two bucks here, 11 bucks there. And before you know it, you're paying triple what you were. On top of that, I believe they know that once they have your credit card in, it will be easier to get people to buy stuff, right? So if your credit card is already in the system, you can create like a, you can create, you know, like a super chat, right? On YouTube or a rumble rant on rumble, you know, your card's already in there. So you're going to use it more often, right? If your card's already in there, oh, now Twitter rolls out their shopping app. Boom. It's linked to your credit card. They already have your credit card. You don't have to re-put it in. So you want to buy something or you want to tip a creator. You want to do this. You want to do that. It's easy once they have your credit card. That's the number one most difficult thing to overcome when you're selling people stuff. It's getting them to put their information in, right? I try to sell people delicious coffee, tea, and cocoa on coffeebrandcoffee.com. Then, you know, getting new customers is very difficult. Even with a great promo like Fall Cocoa, 10% off site-wide. Pick up our delicious peppermint hot cocoa, marshmallow hot cocoa, rich caramel hot cocoa, and velvety hot cocos. As long as also with, you know, our like 50 different coffee teas as well. But yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't buy that this fixes the bot problem. I'm not in love with it at all. And uh, it feels very suspicious.